Hello, certified teachers. I'm Carolyn, your host, and welcome to Weekly Minis, your bite-sized workshop on the hottest acro topics. You can reference all of our previous Weekly Minis and more amazing content on the Acrobatic Arts channel on YouTube. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, and we'll do our best to answer those for you at the end. And if you know someone who should hear about today's topic, be a friend and tag them right now and let them know that we're here. Today, we're thrilled to present the return of master teacher Leah Holiday with a bite-sized tutorial on flying cartwheels. Leah has been teaching acro and dance for over 25 years. She was born and raised in Regina, Saskatchewan and studied dance and baton at the renowned Martin School of Dance. Not only was she known as a well-accomplished dancer, but she represented Canada in baton twirling at numerous world championships as a soloist and team member. Leah has been with acrobatic arts for over four years. She is a course conductor and examiner. Teach, uh, Leah teaches uh, dance and acro at Dance Tech in High River, and she teaches master classes at the Alberta Ballet for Acrobatic Arts. Welcome today, Leah. Thank you for having me, Carolyn. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. We are thrilled to have you back. Always a popular guest and presenter. Um, now today's topic, I will pass things off to you, but with some context, um, we are presenting this live in our certified group for our certified teachers. Um, this has been a topic of conversation over the past few months. So I know we're all waiting with bated breath to see your best tips to help our teachers help their students best executing this move. So I'll let you take it away. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It's so nice to have you here and with us for this Bite Size Mini today. Today, we are talking about flying cartwheels. And as Carolyn mentioned, I've seen over the last um, little while on the Facebook page, the certified page, lots of questions about how to help our dancers achieve this properly. So this is our lead up, as you know, to our our aerial cartwheel. So the flying cartwheel is the progression to the aerial cartwheel. Once our dancers get the flying cartwheel really solid and they have height and their hands are just barely touching the ground, that aerial cartwheel should come very naturally from there. So uh, without further ado, I will introduce my assistant today. This is Sawyer Gatto. Sawyer is my daughter. She is also an acrobatic arts student. She is working on her level seven exam right now and she's here to help us out today. So she's going to demonstrate some of the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to start with just the, reviewing briefly the progressions to, to the side aerial and to the flying cartwheel, just to kind of go over that and put it fresh in your brains. And then we're going to go over some tips for the different parts of the flying cartwheel that will be helpful to you to help your dancers achieve a solid, proficient flying cartwheel, and then eventually an aerial cartwheel. So the first thing we always start with is all of our cartwheel progressions. So we're going to demonstrate them. I am going to zip through them very quickly because they are a progression and today our focus is the flying. So we have the two-handed cartwheel, both right and left. So there's six basic cartwheels that we want to have before we even move into the flying cartwheel because these build our progressional steps to get to the flying cartwheel. So two-handed cartwheel on the right and left. So Sawyer's going to go ahead. This is her left and finish a nice fast cartwheel. Sawyer, please. And ready and go. Two and finish. Good. And then the one hand near hand cartwheel. So the same hand as foot goes on the ground. So this is her left hand, left foot. Away you go with a nice back swing and go. Swing. And seeing that arm is very important in how it swings back. That is a progression to the flying cartwheels. Your dancers need to have a nice, powerful back swing. And this one handed cartwheel is the start of it. So now this again, near hand cartwheel and away you go. Close hand. There we go. Excellent. And then the far hand cartwheel. So now she's using her left foot, her right hand, and again, focusing on that back swing. A lot of my dancers like to tuck their hand behind their back um, because that's just the way they do it in the schoolyard or whatnot when they're first learning this. And it's a big no-no. We need to see that hand swing. That is the progression, again, for the swing for the flying cartwheel. Away you go, Sawyer. And this is the far hand cartwheel. Nice. And then on the other leg, far hand cartwheel. Good. Excellent. So those are the six cartwheels we want our dancers to master. Next, we want to talk about speed. So when we're doing the flying cartwheel and the aerial cartwheel, we need to have a nice fast cartwheel. So we want our dancers to really have a nice wide split so that their feet are getting closer and closer to the ground as they travel around and lots of power. So Sawyer is just going to practice showing us two really fast two-handed cartwheels just with lots of speed. Away you go, Soy. Cartwheel and finish. Good. And then the other leg. Ready and go. Nice fast legs. Good. 
Excellent. Now, for viewing purposes, before we start talking about the flying cartwheel and the tips that we have for you today, Sawyer's going to show us two very nice flying cartwheels on her right and left. And remembering that we want to practice both legs. We want our dancers to be well-rounded and even. So making sure that when we're doing this, we're not just practicing their favorite leg, but we're also practicing their non-favorite leg. And that might be a little bit uncomfortable for them, but it's a great skill for them to help. It builds their anatomical structure properly. It's not overbuilding one side of the body more than the other. So Sawyer's going to do her flying cartwheels just for demonstration purposes. And then we're going to talk about her tips. So starting from tondu and away you go over, nice height, nice arm swing, and going back the other way, tondu, and nice height, and nice arm swing. Good. Uh, excellent. So these, this is the focus for today. Now, we're going to break this down into sort of three, four steps for you. So the things you want to watch for as a teacher and to help your dancers. The first one being the arm swing. So we talked about this in our one-handed cartwheels, having that powerful back arm swing. Now, when we're doing the flying cartwheel, it is essential that those arms are powerfully swinging back. A lot of dancers want to stop and just do a little arm circle like this when they do that, but that's not giving them any back power. That back swing is giving them lift, it's giving them speed, and it's giving them rotational uh, direction. So Sawyer is going to demonstrate just the arm swing, swing from, she can start in a lunge with a parallel lunge. Good. And she's just going to demonstrate the arm swing. So she's going to show you how powerful it needs to happen. Away you go. Swing. Good. And swing. Good. Now that's really important. Now the next piece that we need to talk about is the body and the arms working together. So often what we see when dancers are struggling with this skill is the fact that their arms and their body are working together. So when they do the arm swing, their body needs to travel with them. So Sawyer's going to demonstrate this. Ready? Away you go. Swing. Down. Good. So you can see that her body and her arms are working together. One more time, Sawyer. Swing down. Good. Now, can you demonstrate what it looks like when we do it incorrectly, Sawyer, and the arms go before the body? So as a teaching tool for your teaching eye, you want to watch for this when your dancers are doing their flying cartwheel. So when the arms go before the body, away you go, Sawyer. Arms, then body. Good. Now you can do it faster, but just separate them. So because they won't do it that slow. Go. Swing, swing. Good. Again. Swing, swing. So you can see that that's happening in two parts. What we need to focus on is making sure that this whole body from here through here is going down together. So now, now do it correctly again, Sawyer. Swing, down. Good. So that is really, really important part of the flying cartwheel. And we want to make sure our dancer, dancers feel like they have a stick running through their body and it's traveling together with their arms. Because once they separate, they don't get that same power. Okay, so that's the arm swing. So remember, we're breaking this down into four parts. The next piece we want to talk about is the jump. So a lot of dancers want to try, when they're first learning this, try and do this off of a straight leg. So when they're trying to do the flying cartwheel, they're taking off. Can you do it with a straight leg, Sawyer? So start from Tondu and just try, not, try and do it off a straight leg. There you go. Right. So you can't, you can't really jump or get over. So similar to a saute or a uh, uh, grand jeté, whatever, any kind of jump you do in dance, you need to have a plie and a power move up. You can't do that without bending your knee. So one of the skills we talk about doing is just the jump part of it. So Sawyer is going to add in the arm swing with the body, the body lowering, sorry, words today, and the, the jump. So start from tondu and you're just going to go swing down and jump. Go down, jump. Good. Can you do it a little bit faster so it's not so slow? Okay, ready and go. Down, jump. Good. So you can see how her body's going down and she's jumping. That rhythm is also important that the body goes down and then we're power jumping as we go. Now, a drill that you can do to help your dancers with this is having them do this hop up onto a stack. Now, this can be a little bit tricky for our dancers to get that on all happening at once. So the first thing you want to start with is it's just having them doing hop-ups onto the mat. So this is helping to build the strength they need to get up in the air and to get that saute power. Ready? And jump up and down. Good. Jump up and down. And then on the other leg, because you're practicing both sides, and away you go. Up and down. And up and down. Good. Your dancers need to be able to do that solidly to get that power. Now the next piece applying to the air, the flying cartwheel is helping them to get the jump up with the back kick. So now Sawyer's going to start in Tondu with her arms above. I'm just going to hold the mat so it doesn't slide at all. And she is going to do her back swing, her swing with her arms and her body, kick her back leg, and also hop up onto the mat. Away you go. 
dumb jump. Good. And again. Okay, ready? Lots of power. Go. Do it with power. Dumb up. Good. Now that's helping her to get that feeling. Can you get your body down a little bit more when you do that? Ready and go. Down, jump. Good. You can see how she's having to jump up and really think about that power. That's really important because they need to jump to get height in their flying cartwheel. All right. Now the next part that we're going to add into this is the back kick. So I will grab it for you, sir. The back kick is really important. So when she does this, I'm just going to leave that there or I'll move this out of the way for a sec. Can you just demonstrate the back kick move, Sawyer? So just the back kick. So ready and go. Kick. So we're talking about this, this leg. This is a driving force. This back leg that comes over and leads the cartwheel is so, so important in driving force over and getting speed. Away you go. Kick. There we go. Whoops. Try and do it on a bent knee and go. Kick. So this is it. what we're looking at, that importance of that. So drill you can work on with your dancers to help them get that feeling is to have them do a handstand up on the mat and give them a plate or a something, a, a slider under their back foot. So this is under the foot that's going to be kicking. So all Sawyer is going to do, she's not actually going to do a cartwheel right now. She's going to do a handstand and she's going to work on getting that back kick and kicking that plate out. So it'll give her a visual of how hard she's kicking. Away you go. Up, kick. Oh, so yeah, she didn't, she's putting a little too much pressure on it. Try again. Kick it back hard, Sawyer. So as you can see, it didn't go that far. We want her to kick it way far. Kick it far, Sawyer. Go. Kick. There we go. So you can see the power that she's generating with that back kick. This is a great tool for them to get the feeling of that kick. Try again, Sawyer. One more time. Really work on that kick and go. And up. Excellent. So that's a nice way to kind of build that back kick because that is a huge aspect of this um, flying cartwheel. And the next piece we're going to talk about on the back kick and just a little drill that we have. I'm just bringing over a, a um, bar here for Sawyer. So she's going to come up to the bar and we're going to practice this back kick because we're going to work on the power. Quite often, this is the problem. They're starting to get the arm swing. They're starting to get the body down, but that back kick is just not coming. So we have her start and she's going to just do a plie in parallel and kick that back leg. And that back leg should kick so hard that she goes up into relevé. Away you go. Down, kick. Good. You can see the power of that back leg. Again, ready, go. Down, kick. Good. Well, and she just did the next piece of it before I told her to. So the first one is the relevé. The second one is to add in the jump. So try not to use your hands on the jump, Sawyer. Just work on that back kick. Just go to relevé this time. So relevé down kick good you can see how powerful that's going kick harder Sawyer ready go down kick good now she's going to add in the jump but she's not going to use her hands she's just going to like gently place her hands on the bar away you go now she's going to add in a jump jump good you can take your body forward a little bit more so it doesn't have to be upright because our body is going to go down away you go down kick good excellent so those are just some little drills you can do to get your dancers to start doing this when they start doing it and do it gentler, they won't feel that power to jump yet. So go just do a little gentler. If, if it's just a little bit weaker at the start, they might just feel that. But once they start kicking really hard, they are going to want to leave the earth anyway. So do it one more time and leave the earth, Sawyer. Down, up. Good. Good. And making sure they're taking off of one foot, not two feet. So that's a common error too, is that they try to go off two feet. One more time. Ready and go. Down, up. Good. There we go. So that's working not only on the jump, but that back kick. So it's a nice little tool to use to get that back kick going. Now we're going to progress to the next piece, which is our cartwheel up on to the mat. So we've talked about the arm swing, the body, the back kick, and the jump. Now we're going to put all of these things together. A nice way to do this is to have Sawyer do her flying cartwheel up onto a stack. This forces her to get some height so that she can get her hands up onto the mat. And I'm gonna just hold it so she doesn't fall, it doesn't slip, away you go. Swing, jump, up and over. So you can see all those parts happening and she's gonna come back from the other way. So watch for her, wait, don't go yet. I'm just gonna watch. Watch for her arms and her body swinging down together. So just do that part, swing down together, arms, arms and body, arms and body. There we go. You watch for that. Watch for the back kick. Okay, just do the back kick and go. Back kick. Good. And watch for this jump. So just do the jump up. Just do the jump up onto here and go. Jump up. Okay, we're watching for all of those pieces. So away you go, Sawyer. Tondu. 
and swing, jump, up and over. Good. So that one lacked a little bit of speed. And in my correction to her would be she needs a harder back kick so that her legs come over faster. So let's try that one more time. So this height really, really helps. I like to do it this way rather than the other way where they cargo onto the mat because every dancer has a different length. This allows them to just put their hands on and their feet to the ground. And ready, go. Swing, jump, up and over. Good. Now let's try on this not favorite side to get that back leg kicking hard. Ready, go. Swing. There, that was better. So you can see how that progresses everything from one step to the next. And then finally, we go back to the floor. And Sawyer's going to add in her flying cartwheel without any prep. And away you go. Down, swing, over and up. Good. And again, on the other side, down, swing, over and up. Yes. And you can, I can see, I don't know if you can see at home, but that which side is not her favorite because the cartwheel kind of hovers through the air on the side which means that back kick is really important. You saw her body, you saw her arm swing, that back kick is not as strong. Now, another piece that you wanna really focus on, and this is not a demonstration piece, this is just more of a teaching tool, is the flexibility. So dancers um, with less flexibility in their center split will not have as much speed getting over. So if you can help your dancers work on the flexibility, it, it will help. So Sawyer's so just gonna demonstrate two cartwheels. She's going to show you one where her legs are sort of not in a very wide split and then one where her legs are in a wide split. So you can see the difference of how close the floor comes when she goes through. Ready and go. Cartwheel. So more, well, you don't have to do it ugly. Do it nice, but with like stretch legs and just more V legs than split legs. Okay, V legs, go. Up. Good, there you go. So, I mean, that was at a very, very um, over demonstration of that. Now show one with a nice fast cartwheel with a nice big split. Split those legs over. You can see how her legs get closer to the ground. So working that flexibility is really important. Now, the final step of this flying cartwheel that we will, we will show you, just another tool to use, is using this mat um, for height so they can get the feel of what it feels like to get those hips over faster. So Sawyer's going to start by standing up on the mat in tondu. Okay, good. And I always thought this when, actually, let's back it up a little bit so it's in the camera. I always thought this when they first do this, just before, so they're comfortable because there is a bit of a drop. This mat isn't that high, but some mats are higher. Um, and it is a little bit nerve wracking if they haven't done it before for their hands to hit the floor. So I always get them to start with just feeling how it feels to do a cartwheel off the stack first. And I stand there and I do the hip, hip, hooray spotting that we do in the module one in acrobatic arts just so they feel safe and to make sure that they are confident. Ready and go. Hip, hip, hooray. Okay, and what this tool does is it helps them feel that back leg come over so they can feel the ground coming faster. Try again. Ready and go. Hip, hip, hooray. Good. And then once she's comfortable, I'd have her do it on her own. Okay, ready and go. Cartwheel, finish. Good. So that's one part of it, and that helps her feel what it feels like to get over. Then I would have her start doing this with the flying. So do you need me to hold the mat? I'll hold it a little bit just so it doesn't slip. So ready and go. Fly and over. Good. It gives her that sense of feeling of air so that she understands what it feels like to get over. And then eventually you would help your dancer do the full air off the stack. Because once they get to that nice fly high, fly high flying cartwheel, then the air comes along. So then I would just spot her through this. Ready? Go. Good help her with that. Okay, so that's another really great tool and resource to use. Um, another thing that I just wanted to mention is that you can see I'm starting all of these um, from Tondu. Now, this is what I do because I need my dancers to learn how to do this from standing. I find sometimes once I add in a run run or a chasse step hop into this, they lose all of the technique. So when I'm breaking it down for the dancers, I start them from tondu. With my really, really little ones, I start them right away when they're really petite with just learning the arm circle. So just backing up to the arm circle for a second for the little ones, I always have them just start in tondu, do an arm circle, go, and then a cartwheel. Good. I actually break it down that little so that they understand the idea of an arm circle. And I tell them to listen for slapping of their thighs so that when their arms come down, they should slap their thighs all the way around and then cartwheel, go. Arm circle and cartwheel. So I have them start it that way just so they get the idea of those arms coming around. Because like I said earlier, they want to do this. 
Then I slowly break it down so that they get closer and closer. So now get that arm circle and start going into your cartwheel while you're doing your cartwheel or your arm circle. There we go. Good. And again, ready and go. Arm circle, cartwheel. Good. And so those are just some tips with my really little ones who aren't quite ready for a flying cartwheel, but we're building that concept. So I build that concept with them when they're five and six. So to conclude, I think we've covered quite a lot of ground. Um, the, the ways you can break down this flying cartwheel, the arm swing, the arm swing with the body down, which have to happen in one full unit, the jump up, so working that uh, leg strength to help them with the jump part of it and getting into the plie, not taking off a straight leg, and the back kick. So working that back kick. So remember, we use the bar, the powerful back kick, and then putting it all together. And the timing of all of that is very important. The arm swing and the body going down need to happen at the same time. Then once their body's down, they jump. That back kick happens when they jump. So just to conclude, Sawyer, show us two very nice flying cartwheels. Ready and go. Jump and finish. Good. And one more. Ready, Tondu, and jump and finish. Excellent. Good. I hope that helps everybody with their flying cartwheels and gives you a bit more tips and tricks for your studio time. Amazing. Amazing. Sawyer, uh, thank you so much for being an amazing demonstrator um, and being able to um, put into real time all of those great skills and drills. Uh, Leah, thank you too. I think what I love so much about your presentation is um, sometimes when we get to questions from teachers, there's lots of repetition of the same thing. And I think you would agree that repetition is the mother of all skill, but sometimes that repetition just reinforces the undesirable behavior. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Practicing it wrong. I think my coach used to tell me growing up, um, if you do it wrong once, you have to do it 77 times right to correct it. So uh, that's always in the back of my brain. <laughs> right. And so what I loved was all those drills that you broke down for specific elements of the flying cartwheel um, gives teachers tangible tools and drills to give to their students that reinforces the desired behavior. So instead of sort of banging your head on the same thing over and over again, you can break it down and there's drills that can support that in such a meaningful way. I, I love those, uh, like the, the slider, uh, using the, the mats. Um, so awesome. Thank you so much for all of that. Um, when we were talking and teachers, if you have any questions, um, please put them in the comments and we'll make sure that um, Leah is able to answer those for you in real time here. Um, at the point in which you were discussing the arm swing timing with the body down, uh, Mandy suggested that that's one of the biggest errors that she sees um, in flying cartwheels. Would you agree that that's probably where the biggest breakdown for students is on this skill? 100%. That timing of that body and those arms is so essential to developing that power. And a lot of our dancers in the studio, when you're watching them go across the floor and those arms go and then the body go, it, it's, it's so, so common. Um, and it's a really hard thing to fix. But like I said, the drills and the repetition and in reinforcing the correct technique is so, so important. And as a teacher, being able to see that when they go, and even when they're doing it from a chasse step, step hop, being able to see that their arms go before the body. It, it, is, the, it is the most common error. Okay, awesome. And so we've given, um, Leah's given lots and lots of ideas as to how to, you know, break that down and to move through um, that um, issue or that breakdown that dancers seem to uh, face on that, on that uh, skill. So also with this, Obviously, Leah's given tons of great information and tips. This really is a precursor to uh, a, a weekly mini that Leah did recently called How to Spot a Side Aerial. So there's some similar drills and skills there, probably even um, ones that weren't touched on here. So I will put the link to that in the comments um, as we close out today. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share about this as we close, Leah? No, I don't think so. I think just, again, like you said, um, reinforcing the correct technique. And I would always tell people to back it up to Tondu, um, so starting from Tondu, because I find even watching the Facebook certified page, watching dancers run across the floor, everything goes wrong. They can't think about the technique that they're working on. So if your dancers are struggling, just as advice as from teacher to teacher, if your dancers are struggling with a skill, back it up, take it down to the Tondu, make sure they understand what's happening with their body, add in the chasse step hop later, and you'll see that even more power come. But when things are falling apart, I find that's sometimes where it happens too. They forget everything they're supposed to do. 
Right, well, you heard it here, teachers. Lots of great information on this topic uh, once again by Leah. So Leah and Sawyer, thank you both so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us, Carolyn. Uh, can you um, introduce Sawyer one more time so she can take a bow? Okay, yes. This is Sawyer Gatto, and she is my demonstrator today. She's my daughter, and she is also an acrobatic arts um, stu student. All right, away you go. So thank you, Sawyer, so much for all your help today. You did a great job. You can bow. <laughs> there you go. The awkward bow. There we go. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leah and Sawyer. Thank you, teachers. Now, if you're interested in learning more, obviously, if you're here, you have your module one. Um, but coming up this summer is uh, many opportunities through our North American tour to get your module two, uh, as well as the aerial and back handspring course. Lots more information on our website at acrobaticarts.com. And not just in North America, but watch for our global offerings coming to a location and online near you. Thank you, Sawyer. Leah, teachers, join us again next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you.